So I was randomly thinking about it. I was randomly thinking about it. Um, James, James Grant. I've got a story about him. And he said in his work that he sees us now, the bond market, rather the U.S. bond market, has just entered into a secular bear market that can last up to four decades. I got to tell you, when he said it, I kind of brushed it off. Since then, it feels like maybe he's right. It, well, it could be, and it, it might, but it might uh, transpire in a way that is contrary to what people might expect. I like the end of the bond market. The end of the, not the end of the bond market, I mean, maybe. Um, got to get those taxes paid, got to get those deficits down. Um, nothing wrong with deficits, but rising deficits when the economy is hot to trot. Not so good, but um, the bond bull market, this 40-year-plus phenomenon uh, coming to an end, prophesized by uh, Mr. James Grant. Um, but we it's how we get there. Don't tell me the destination. Tell me how we kind of get there. And I, as I like, I love actually that Jeff is picking up on this. Respect. I like Jim Grant. I respect him a lot. I'm a paid up subscriber to his service. I read his essay that just that came out in the middle of July that spoke to that bear market. And he's so self-deprecating. And that's one thing I like about uh, Jim Grant. He's so brilliant. He is so de self-deprecating about it. But he I tell you, he wasn't so self-deprecating with me. Um, I, I had lots of uh, lovely, charming um, encounters with James. I had the, the great honor of presenting at his interest rate observer conference, uh, both in New York and the the inaugural one in in London. But I do recall <laughs> writing in my, my Eclectica Monthly, um, it was when I was rejecting all of this name calling and moralizing um, all of the uh, the the noise in my mind that was preventing me from managing other people's money and and I was kind of did I lash out but I mentioned James um, Albert Edwards um, and probably a few others but you know, including myself uh, uh, the bears if you will and I was um, overcoming my beige disposition, I was saying most likely that the movement in markets was higher. Um, boy, did I get a pretty unpleasant email from Mr. Uh, James Grant. But anyway, James, I love you. I oh, I think I'd never forgiven him for. Um, I think in the summer of 2008, and the guy who knows more, and I thought that was interesting, the guy who knows more, see, in my mind, I'm doing it again. I'm kind of, uh, what am I doing? I'm just being annoying. I am uh, two steps ahead of every sentence. It's a cluttered mind. Um, in the summer of 2008, um, and so the guy who has this encyclopediatic knowledge and understanding of the bond market to the ninth, nth degree, and there you are in the summer of 2008, I want to see the 10 year bond yield was 4.2%. And James and in the interest rate observer letter, uh, the guy who knows everything about bonds, he says, and kind of quoting the language of um, Buffett and well, Benjamin Graham, at 4.2%, the yield on the 10 year does not offer a margin of safety to protect the conservative investor. <laughs> it's a preposterous statement. Perhaps I had ever read, but um, James, forgive me. But he acknowledged in that essay, in a self-deprecating manner, that he wrote essentially the same essay about here comes a 40-year bear market in 2004. So uh, it can take a long time. That's one of my number one pieces of advice to people about right. investments is it takes a lot longer than people think. Now, what yes, I'm saying- It about takes a lot longer. No, to all of you people on Twitter, uh, X, they keep saying, are we there yet? TLT was a call option on the Jan 25, 2025. What's the time? What's the time, Mr. Wolf? Which, where's my calendar? We are presently in the year 2023. Things take a very long time to unfold. A bull market of such preposterously long magnitude such as the treasury 40 years plus 
Um, I don't, I don't think, think it's going to end. Without a bang, and a bang wars, we get an audio yeah. invasion from outer space. And 10 year yields hit the floor. You know, we're down at 46 basis points. Um, and maybe I'm greedy. Maybe, maybe that was it. I just don't know. So I, I'm looking for the most preposterous drama and the most preposterous conversion of deep-seated beliefs. Now, what I'm saying about there could be a, a lengthy, painful bear market in bonds, it's not really the next move in the chess, chess game. The next move in the chess game. You see, Jeff's a, Jeff just gets it. I've got to use a thousand... Um, Exalted, exalted. Uh, I've got to, I've got to strangle and wrestle. My mind is not working very well tonight. Let's go out to I think it might happen because of the response to the next recession, which could be very inflationary. Mm. We, we've seen, we've seen the playbook, right? When we had the global financial crisis, there was tons of money printing and quantitative easing, and we kept at it, and then we had the pandemic. And it's tons of money printing and quantitative easing, and the fiscal response keeps getting bigger. So I think what might happen is Don Luskin may be right, and that the Fed, in their resolution to get inflation down towards or to two percent, will probably overshoot, just like it overshot on the upside. They wanted to get inflation higher than two. My suspicion was they wanted to get it to four back in 2021, 20, early 22. Not only did it go to four, of course, it went to nine, and the PPI went to double digits and import and export prices went to over 15% right. year over year basis. So if we're, we've already fallen from nine back down to three, but now we're going back up a little bit again on the CPI. Right. And that I think is going to keep the Fed uh, constantly resolute about things. But once the economy rolls over, which I think is going to happen with this uh, confluence of taxes have to be paid, uh, rent has to be paid, student loans have to be paid, credit card bills, are getting very expensive and getting very large. You know, I, I think that what we'll end up doing is having the inflation rate go down ultimately when the recession comes to 2%, but probably then head in temporarily into deflation. And then um, so this guy manages a lot of uh, fixed income money. And you know, he manages a lot of uh, AUM, assets under management. Um, and he believes that prices could actually, the rate of change in prices could actually turn negative. And that will end up causing a reactionary response that will be highly inflationary. Yeah. I think in the next yeah. recession, the thing that will be so confounding to people is that bond yields, once we get deeper into the recession, bond yields will actually start to go up because of excessive um, money printing and monetary response. And so I Hallelujah. Uh, in the next, uh, and let's not get this wrong, profound recession. Uh, during the recession, bond prices will, will turn, will take flight, and prices will start falling. Uh, and that will be the demarcation line uh, recording the end of perhaps the greatest bull market in any asset class. So it's the bull market in the risk-free rate. Uh, the bull market will come to an end during the next great economic downturn, which is likely uh, to be revealed, like we started now, likely to, to be revealed in all its shock and, and awe next year. But then I think the economy is going to hit a wall in the next six or six or eight months or so, and there's going to be a, a real shutdown in consumer activity due to all of these interest payments that have to be made. And of course, one thing that I always want to talk about is the government right. has a very onerous and increasing debt burden, of course, too. And I think the Fed, in the back of their mind, realizes that when the next recession comes, the amount of borrowing is going to be so enormous that uh, it's going to be a really bad idea to have interest rates. Right. Hey, Jeff's just kept going. He's hitting this really uh, good point about fiscal dominance, that with the quantum of debt outstanding, the Fed is either under its own powers, vestiges, coming to recognize that uh, you can't put 5%, 5.5%, 6, 6.5%, 7. You cannot put these interest rates uh, as a charge onto the U.S. Treasury. Uh, the, I'm blowing up. Um, and so the Fed um, actually kind of needs the cover. Does it need it? But 
It needs to cut rates. Right. It's higher than five and a half percent. With five and a half percent interest rates. And the Federal Reserve is in no hurry to cut interest rates. And therefore, this economy is going to go down. It's going to go down heavy. I mean, it's really heavy. I mean, the stock market's down 40%. You'll be squealing, squealing to buy those treasury bonds. And you know, the TLT down at 95. I traded almost 185. Um, it's going to go 110. At 110, the chart's going to be giving you a chart point to buy. We're going to buy a lot. It's going to go to 120, probably going to go to 140, probably will exceed 140. Um, we'll still probably go somewhere 140 in that range, 140 to 180. Guess what I'll be doing? I will be selling it. I will be buying long term. Again, long term, long term, two years, trying to roll into three years, into four years. I'll be buying put options on the price um, of those bonds because we have to, it's 2008 again or 2007, 2008 redux. Um, you have to create the most profoundly awful deflation. And if and the deflation I'm talking about is China and the currency, the C, the C, give me a C, the N, the H, the C and H trading at nine. It's what it traded. It's what they devalued to uh, in the wake of the NAFTA agreement in 1994. Um, at nine, the amount of commercial price disinflation that, that brings on the rest of the world will be intense. Um, and you will have further radicalization of the US government. And we will be very much at that point accelerating into the demise of the monetary system that we recognize today. And the demise will be at the behest of the US, who will have to say, this has got to end. This is killing us. And that will not, it will not be asset price friendly to any asset class. And it will not be, it will be particularly severe, severely unpleasant for the fixed income market. Anyway, uh, Jeff, Jeff, stop me from talking. In 2007, I wrote to my clients, if you think the future is inflationary, you got to buy the 30-year bond. Uh, again, um, the deflation that, we, that was a reality in the US housing market in 2007 um, was the thing that was going to bring interest rates to the floor. It was the thing that was going to be the advent of quantitative easing. We got that right. And it looks like Jeff's arguing um, we're going to go into that world again. So remember, if you think the world is inflationary, buy bonds. That's what, that's what Jeff's saying.